Last February, I created my first short documentary, Why Human, which centered around the idea of what it truly meant to be human. For the film, I asked my friends to send me some voice notes with their thoughts on the matter, and I layered their audio over some footage I had captured over the past year. The week it was released, I received so many messages from so many different people telling me how much they loved it, how it made them cry, how it gave them hope, and even how it inspired them. Seeing how something I made could impact so many people, some of which I never even met, made me realize that filmmaking is something I wanted to pursue over my senior year. Movies have always been a big part of my life, but I think it was quarantine where I truly fell in love with them. The escapism they provided during those difficult times was incredibly important to me, and as I delved deeper and deeper into the film world, I truly realized its values are important. A well-made film can be incredibly impactful, can make you cry, can make you laugh, and even on the occasion, make you want to better yourself. Because of this richness of storytelling, I pursued what I love, and I made a movie. Last February, me and my friends were bored during the commons on and off period for the, for the usual. Because of our boredom, my friend Dave began to draw this creature on a whiteboard, and 40 minutes later, we had a design and background for it instead of our math homework done. <laughs> Over the course of the next week, we would come up with a general outline for a story and introduce characters within that story. We also came up with a title for it, The Lacerated. Over the course of the next nine months, we put together a fully nailed down script, and five months later, we had a eight person cast, 23 extras, and five days to shoot a 15 minute film. I truly learned a lot in those five days in the coming six months as a filmmaker and as a person. For my capstone, I got to make this movie with my friends, but I also con got to conduct several interviews with people on their thoughts on film in the Christian world and people working within the film world. I also got to read several books and magazines delving into creative psyche and naturally also got to watch a ton of films on my own. I also explored how my creative passions could connect to Christianity and what role I as a Christian could play within the film world. One of the most difficult things I had to fight throughout making the film was my perfectionism. It didn't really come up in pre-production when we were writing the script or when, even when we were shooting as we were just creating the components for the film, not putting it together yet. However, when I got to editing, my excitement for the project just plummeted. I realized there were shots where it was lit way too dark and the footage was unusable. There was audio where you could hear people talking in the background, and we had even entirely forgotten to get some shots due to the rush pace of that week. Editing ended up taking a lot longer than I planned as we finished editing, filming the film at the end of July, and I had originally planned to release it at the end of October. I figured three months was more than enough time to edit a 15 minute film. The film did not end up coming out until March 13th, and that's because I truly didn't realize how big of a task I had taken on. In number sense, it ended up taking me about 120 hours in total to edit the film. The total film ended up only being about 12 minutes long. That means on average, it took me about 10 hours to edit one minute of film fully, and that's not including the 14 hours of conference calls I had with my composer. I felt like quitting at multiple points throughout the process, but I was already in too deep. But I eventually learned to slowly let my perfectionism go and stop majoring over the minors. If a shot was lit way too dark, I tried my best to fix it, and if half an hour later I couldn't get it, I just move on and accept that it wasn't perfect. I used to be a much more difficult person to be around because I would expect perfection from everyone, including myself. And it, resulted in a lot of arguments, and um, it just, it just, <laughs> and just a lot of fights between my friends and my family. But this change in me is a reason why I say that my films are a part of me. Every time I've made one, it's changed how I view the world and who I am as a person. While making The Lacerated, I also realized I don't necessarily like making narrative-based films as much as I had thought. I'm glad I figured this out before college, as I had originally planned to go into the filmmaking industry and wanted to go into Hollywood. When I was editing the film, I didn't realize how much I wasn't going to view the movie as a movie. As weird as that may sound at first, it makes perfect sense to me the more you think about it. When I was looking at the small frame on my computer editing, I saw way more than what was within that frame. I knew that the car door was not an invisible monster opening it. It was my friend Dave pointing it open with the fishing wire, and I knew that my friend Rachel was standing one foot to the right holding a light, and that Noah was doing a summer reading in the back. I also didn't view my actors as characters within the story, more so just friends. This isn't to say they were bad, they were phenomenal, especially considering the circumstances, 
I just couldn't convince myself that there was an actual story being told. Because of this, I have absolutely no desire to watch The Last Read at all right now, which isn't the case with my previous film, Why Human, which I think goes to show how much more I enjoy watching and making my documentaries. The other part I disliked about making a narrative film is it has to be a lot more clean and polished than when I was working on Why Human. I couldn't acknowledge that there's somebody holding a camera. If the footage was a little grainy, it was absolutely unusable. And if you could hear somebody talking in the background, which happened a lot, you had to re-record it all. There was more focus on how well I could present a fake and immersive world instead of simply just the content on the screen. When I was editing my documentary, it didn't matter if you could see me operating a drone or see my reflection in the camera or even hear people talking in the background. My focus was fully on the message I was going for and the emotion I wanted to convey. It also just feels more authentic to me as it's experiences that I've actually lived and people who are actually real. Additionally, if you want to look at it from a Christian perspective, it's presenting the world that God has created and providing commentary on it. When we were told at the beginning of the year that we would be spending the next nine months working on something that we loved, I immediately knew that filmmaking was what I wanted to do. However, when we were told we'd have to connect it back to God, I was entirely lost. Honestly, coming into the beginning of the school year, I don't know if I would have considered myself a Christian. And I viewed the only form of evangelism as being a missionary or a pastor. Luckily, last October, I ended up going on a youth, on a youth retreat and ended up reconnecting to God and even read my Bible for the first time on a whim. By chance, I came across Psalm 19, 1 through 2, which says, The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. This came at an incredibly convenient time as I was really struggling with my capstone, how to connect what I was making to God. However, what this made me realize is that the act of simply creating in itself is more than enough. The act of creating is a form of worship, which was incredibly relieving to me as I had previously tried to connect what I was making instead of the fact that I was simply was creating. This past year, I also got the opportunity to interview Landry Long who runs a production company in LA called Soul House, where he produces music videos, promotional videos, and even produces music for some bands. Uh, he was a friend of Coach Stidham's in college, so I knew going into the interview that he was a Christian in the creative field, which is something that I want to do. So I asked him how he thought he showed his faith in his work, and I don't know why, but I was ex expecting some incredibly complicated answer that would justify creativity in filmmaking as the ultimate means for showing God's love. So. When he gave me the simple answer that he just aimed to be a kind and forgiving person, I was surprised at how such a simple answer was the answer to my year-long question. I don't have to, what I'm making doesn't have to be based on my faith. I just need to be based on my faith myself. This is incredibly relieving as it puts less pressure on me uh, to have what I make be an evangelistic tool. I just need to be an evangelist myself. This past January, I took a break from working on the Lacerated and taught a J-turn class here at Front Range. For about a week, I taught 30 students the nuances of film, like editing, framing, and music, and how they can emotionally impact your audience. Then, I released them on the final few days to make their own films, and their excitement over it made me realize what I had truly lost with the Lacerated. They were excited to create simply just because they got to do the act of creation with their friends. What I realized what had happened to me is I had become excited to create something that was objectively good or incredibly polished. The act of creation in itself was no longer as exciting to me. On the final day, when we were playing their films and handing out awards, a big realization hit me. They had had way more fun in that one week than I had had in the past six months working on my film. My students were excited to create simply just because they got to create. It didn't matter if the audio was a little too quiet at times, or that the story was nowhere near believable. No. <laughs> they just wanted to make you laugh or make you smile. I am kind of disheartened that I have lost this while working on The Last Rated, as my wonder for the world and joy for creativity is something I used to hold so dearly. Because of this, I'm going to make it a point as I move forward to make sure that I just enjoy the simple act of creation and not be so focused on the end product. My capstone truly came to a close on the day the last reader premiered at the Chess Artiste Theater about 20 minutes down the road um, near Denver. Hours of hard work and stress had finally come to this one hour, and it was time to reap the reward. I got up in front of a crowd of about 100 people, 
ready to introduce the film, having a whole speech prepared. But then I looked at three of my closest friends and I threw the whole speech away. I decided to embarrass them and made them stand up and I publicly acknowledged them for everything they had done and they received a roaring applause. That was my favorite moment of that day. Not seeing my own film at theater or having people congratulate me for the feat I just pulled off, but getting a chance to recognize the people who supported me and the people I loved. You see, the part I liked the most about working on The Last Rated wasn't when we got a perfect shot or when an actor delivered their dialogue perfectly. It was the moments in between now with my friends where it was raining, we were all piled in one car laughing and joking around. The final product was nowhere close to my favorite part. I actually spaced out for most of the theatrical premiere because I'd grown so bored of the movie. Next time I go to work on a film, I'm gonna make it a point to work on, to enjoy the process of creating with my friends and those around me instead of being so focused on what we were trying to make. One of my favorite poems is Rainer Maria Rilke's Go to the Limits of Your Longing. And in that poem, there's a quote that goes, uh, let everything happen to you, beauty and terror, just keep going, no feeling is final. I actually first discovered this in 2019 as it was at the end of one of my favorite movies released that year, Jojo Rabbit. At first, I didn't fully understand the quote, but after this capstone experience, I now completely agree with it. The only reason I got to experience the great and wonderful parts of working on a film is because I got to is because I had to endure the very worrisome and frustrating parts of it. In my life, I've tended to shy away from the good because I knew I'd have to endure some amount of the bad, which has caused me to miss out on so many opportunities. However, after this capstone experience, I now welcome the challenge that diving into the unknown provides. There's going to be hard and bad things about putting myself out there but the potential rewards are so worth fighting for. All of these lessons over the past year have shaped me as a filmmaker and a person, and I'm super grateful I got to have such awesome and unique experiences. I don't know if filmmaking is entirely what I want to do as a career moving forward, as I've actually switched from majoring in film to minoring in it in college, so I still love it, but I'm not fully certain it's what I want to do. I'm, um, I'm also glad I've grown as a person, as learning to let my perfectionism go has allowed me to just enjoy being with people a lot more and maybe a more agreeable person to be around. I also now have placed a lot more of my worth in the relationships I have with others instead of what I create. A passion may be my spark, but it's not my purpose. Ultimately, I'm not glad I made a movie because I got to make a movie. I'm glad I made a movie because how it's formed and changed me for the better. Thank you.